What's up, YouTube? What is going on? Chana D, your techno dad here, back with another viewer requested video. You guys wanted to know how to add an external amp to an AV receiver, specifically to the Denon AVR X3600H, and that is exactly what I'm going to show you, and we're going to get into it right after this word from our show sponsor. If you're looking to upgrade your sound or you are just starting out, you need to check out the wide range of Klipsch speakers. From small bookshelf speakers to heritage tower speakers, they have you covered in every price range and for every budget. Whether it's a soundbar for upgrading your TV experience, a two-channel listening room, or a full-blown Dolby Atmos home theater, check out Klipsch.com and you too can be pissing off the neighbors. And we are back. So for this demonstration, I have the Denon AVR X3600H, Parasound Halo Integrated, Outlaw Model 5000 5 channel amplifier, and Monolith 9X 9 channel amplifier. For cables, I'll be using my go to. Those are the Mogami Studio Gold 3 foot RCA cables. Let's take a quick look at the back of the X3600H so you can see what areas we are going to be using. Right in the center is the pre out section. We will be concentrating here, and as you can see, there is a zone 2 pre out, but we will not be using it, so let's just ignore that section. We will be working with these RCA pre outs to connect a total of 9 channels externally. Why 9? Because I have a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos setup, which totals 9 channels, so we're going to do 9. The other part we need to look at and remember to connect is the trigger output, which is located here on the back of the Denon. We are going to use the Outlaw Audio Model 5000, which is a five channel amplifier, but we will be using it in a two channel, three channel, and five channel configurations. Now I know in past videos, people have been confused with the labels that Outlaw has placed for each channels. They're trying to tell you how to connect the amp and which channels to go where or which speakers to plug into which channels. And since each outputs the same amount of power, you actually don't need to follow their like plan. I mean, I'm not going to. I'm going to organize them the way that I want. So instead of those letters and assigning them to speakers, just imagine they are single channel numbers like one through five. And that's all you need to do. First things first, I'll quickly show you how to connect the trigger cable. And now we'll just get rid of that so that's out of the way. Okay, so now we need to connect the front speakers to the amp. So how do you know on the back of the Denon which outputs are right and left? Well, that's actually pretty easy. You have two colors, white and red. The easiest way to remember is that red is right, which means the white RCA jack is for the left speaker. Easy, right? So I wanna start with two channel mode. So let's plug in the front left speaker, which is the white RCA jack into channel one on the Outlaw 5000. Now I'm going to plug the front right speaker, which is the red RCA jack into channel two of the amp. Now all we have to do is plug in the trigger cable. Of course, you gotta plug in speaker cables and sources and all that kind of stuff. What we're not gonna you know, go into all that. Basically, it's just the RCAs and the trigger cable and we'll be all good to go. So if you had a two channel amp, this is what you need to do. Also, you will have to go into the Denon X3600H menu and properly assign the pre outs. If you haven't seen my video about that, I will link it in the description and with the card up top. Now, let's say your plan was to power your front stage and you picked up a five channel amplifier as most of the three channel amplifiers are pretty expensive. So all we need to do from this step is connect another RCA cable, this time from the center pre out jack to the third channel on the amplifier. Again, here's what it looks like with the front stage and the trigger cable connected. From here, if you wanted to power the five ear level speakers, simply connect the surround left and surround right to the remaining channels on the amp. Once you connect those and the trigger cable, you're all set up. So if you had this five channel amplifier and this AVR, you can run five ear level speakers on the external amplifier and run all the other speakers off of the AV receiver. And you can do a full 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos setup. Pretty sweet. All right, let's move on to the Monolith 9 channel amplifier. 
Now I'll be making an unboxing and overview video about this power amplifier, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you get notified when that video is released. Now the first thing you might notice on the back of this amplifier, unlike the Model 5000, it has both XLR and RCA connections. What we need to do first is to tell the amp to use the RCA inputs as opposed to the XLRs. To do this, we move these switches into the RCA position. If your amp has both connection types, there will be some sort of selector on the back somewhere. Now with the Outlaw Model 5000, it did not matter what amp channels we used as they all output the same amount of power. That, however, is not the case here. The Monolith 9X sends more power to the front three speakers than the other six channels. So in this case, we will go ahead and follow their speaker layout on the back of the amp. First, I will connect the front right to the right RCA on the 9X. Next is center. So I'll connect from the Denon center preout to the amp's center input. And now front left to left. Next is the left surround and then the right surround. In my system, I don't have surround back channels, so we will skip these two pre-outs on the Denon. Next, we connect height one right and height one left. And then we need to connect height two right and left. The final thing to plug in is the trigger cable. So once that's done, we are ready to fire up this nine channel Atmos setup with all nine channels externally amplified. So I'm sure you're wondering why I brought the Halo integrated into this video. I've had a lot of questions about how to connect an older amp or old AVR and use that as a power amp. Now, I am not recommending you do this. I would recommend getting a straight up power amplifier, but I know you guys are just gonna do what you're gonna do, so I'll show you how I would do it. But again, I do not recommend doing this, but since I've got so many questions about it, might as well show you how to do it. Why do I not recommend this? It's because you will have to deal with setting the volume level on the older amp and of course set it to stereo so it doesn't try to process the incoming signal. So after you do that, just pick any one of the analog inputs and plug in your front speakers to the older amp or AVR. In some integrated amps like this one, they have what's called a theater bypass. This means you can connect to this input here and it will bypass the preamp functions and will act as a power amp only. That's pretty handy and it's pretty cool. Well, there you go, everybody. I hope this answers a lot of your questions. If it didn't and you still are confused, definitely let me know down in the comments. Hit me up on social, whatever you like to use. Email me if you like that as well. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it informative and useful. And don't forget to smash that like button and, of course, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Peace.